Oh. Tristan, can you you can hear me and see me all right, right? Hey Jay, I can hear I can't hear you. How about now? It's my sound. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, so no, because I when I first looked at this, okay, thanks, Dan. Um, like I didn't see anybody out there, so look, and it said it was something about a practice session. So I was wondering if like something got mixed up. So, but it looks like we've got folks out there. It's just yeah, that every just all in the attendees. Okay. I can start moving people over. Yeah, if you don't mind, please. Okay. Okay, guys. So, uh, well, Tristan's doing that. My apologies. I, I just this uh, the webinar stuff. I still am uh, a little new to, so it didn't look like that there was anybody out there. And so, um, but we'll go ahead and get started. So, we just have a, a pretty quick um, day today. Really, what we're just going to go over is the um, wanted to give everybody just a little bit another opportunity to have exposure to the access.gov. Sorry, guys. I'm going to shut my door. Sorry about that. You have everybody the opportunity to get back and see the uh, access.gov system. Um, people have been using it the last month and, and everything's been working out pretty good. Uh, one thing that I do want to bring up is um, on timing of when uh, match payments are actually being submitted. We've done pretty good, and I think that you know most of the districts, you guys have had the ability to um, to to revise your your board meetings so that you were able to kind of keep within that 
uh, 15 day window from the first to the 15th of getting everything submitted. And so I just, if there's people out there that are still having a problem with that, you know, I just want to remind you that your board does have the authority to do like a delegation of approval to like the superintendent or to your clerk or whoever they deem is appropriate. Um, one of the reasons why we I'm bringing that up is because we're still trying to get folks to stay within that uh, window of the first through the 15th. Now we've we've been able to um, accommodate folks. You know, if some of you guys' meetings are falling like on that 14th day or whatever, um, you guys have been doing a great job of sending us a copy of your warrant as well as a scanned copy of the the certification form. You know, and as long as we've gotten those, we've been able to go ahead and we've released the payment and worked with DPHHS to make sure that the the money is actually getting paid out. Um, one of the things, though, again, as we continue to move forward, uh, you know, if we as much as possible can try to get to that um, 15 day window. Um, one of the reasons is, is that, you know, in this process, we've kind of identified that for reconciliation purposes, the, the more that we can keep people up to date, um, not have like uh, multiple months of outstanding claims out there, <clears throat> excuse me, it's made it a lot easier for DPHHS and OPI to help you guys reconcile your, your, your invoices that's coming from your mental health providers. And so if we're, we're going to keep pushing to try to keep that as, again, as close as we can so we can keep things current. Um, there has been an actual proposal put on the um, before OPI with DPHHS that um, rather than have an actual monthly um, claims out there where you could have multiple months is that each month, that the if you get beyond that first or the 15th window, then you would have to wait until the subsequent month to actually make your match payment because it would be like a cumulative amount. Now, part of the reason for that proposal is, is that we've identified that one, again, for kind of reconciliation purposes, again, the most of the, if we can keep you current, it's going to make it a lot easier. But then also as we um, go towards, you know, that getting off of what they call that enhanced FMAP rate that we're using due, due to COVID, uh, we're going to try to do what we can to um, prevent any timing issues with, with FMAP changes. Now, we had initially kind of talked about um, maybe trying to move to that cumulative process here in July. Um, we have about four school districts out there, though, right now that are have multiple months out there. And before we look at even going forward with something like that, we want to make sure that everybody's caught up. Um, but then also we just want to, one, I want to bring this kind of to everybody's um, attention, something to think about. You know, um, I would really would, would love and entertain having kind of a little bit of an open discussion about this as we continue to move forward. Um, it isn't something that we have to do today. But again, moving forward and thinking about the timing of that, if any school thinks that they're going to have issues outside of that, well, first through the 15th window, then um, we need to try to look at some alternatives that we can do. Again, the intention here is just to make it, you know, as easy on everybody, um, all sides, everybody's involved, as well as just administratively to try to reduce the amount of work that, that you guys are going to have to do as well. So, so with that, I'll take, I will pause on that for just a minute. If anybody has questions on that, um, I'll be happy to answer anything. Or, you know, if anybody just has any comments, you know, um, about how the process is going, you know, we're always happy to hear feedback. So if you guys have concerns or see things that since we've got this going, um, you have suggestions that would make it easier, please don't hesitate to speak up. So I'll hold on for just a second to see if anybody has questions. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any. And so then... Um, Tristan, I did want to make it so we need to make it so Becky can share her screen. Um, for those of you who don't, don't know Becky, Becky, I might have you jump on with your um, camera there. There we go. Yeah, okay. You're just adjusting. Oh, you're on mute, Becky. Okay. Hello. All right. So, everybody, this is Becky Bell. And Becky's one of our accountants here at OPI, and she's the one that's been helping out a lot with. Uh, getting the um, access gov set up and then also helping out with getting the certification forms distributed out so i'm going to let her take um, a few minutes to um, go through that and then uh, jill i'll come back and address your question about the fmap so becky i'm going to turn it over to you all right hello everybody good afternoon um so if you go out to the office of public instruction website Underneath the educators, 
and in suicide prevention, you'll find the CSCT information. And we're moving kind of slow. <laughs> So you'll click on the Find CSCT District Meeting Information tab. And it'll take you to the CSCT landing site, which has a bunch of information that could be useful to schools, such as um, the MOU form, accounting guidance, and a manual for how to use the Access Gov site. Is it just that slow, Becky? It's like, yeah, it is. It's going that slow. Yeah. Up in somewhere, unless we have a problem with our server right now. <laughs> we promise you, it's not this this slow all the time, guys. It's not. There we go. All right. So there's two places that you can enter the Access Gov site. You can go from the CSET certification form or the access.gov. We also have an access.gov training available in case you get stuck when you're doing the process and then an access.gov manual. So if you click on the link, it'll bring you to the access.gov site. And from here, you have the opportunity to create an account or not create an account. Um, if you create an account, it will save your forms or forms that are in progress. Um, basically, you'll have historical data. And so if you want to create an account, you would go to the login. Um, to access your CSCT certification form, so one, one uh, thing that will prompt you to be able to know to go out and look at your CSCT certification form is you will receive an email from the OPI CSCT email, and it will have your district's ICN data, which is each, uh, it's like the individual, um, uh, the individual provider information for the school. You'll also be able to find your NPI number there as well. So from here, it'll ask you if you've completed the CSCT provider certification form. And at this point you haven't, so you'll say no. And then you'll start the form. Yes, it's usually not this slow. So of course, if you have trouble finding your NPI number, you can use your previous bills, or you could also email me or the OPI CSET email. So for this purposes, I put in a test school. And so this school has three months of state share due. You can select one or all of them to display on the certification form. I'll just select them all. And then you'll hit select next and submit. And it'll download, there'll be two forms available to you. First is gonna be your certification form. This is the form that you'll bring to your board or your authorized uh, re representative to sign, but it'll have the state share match matches that are owed by the school. So you'll get that signed. Also included is the CSCT state by share by school. 
So this is just a little bit more detail and it'll have the schools at the top and then it'll break it down below. So after you've downloaded your forms, you'll just hit close. And then after you receive, um, you get your form signed and you're ready to make a payment, you have the option to be able to make the payment online or to mail in a check. So step two is the CSET provider certification submission form. This is where you're gonna submit your form or upload it to the website. So it'll ask you the question if you've completed the form and you'll say yes, start form. Enter in your MPI number. And then you have the option to pay one or all the bills owed. And then you'll select next. In order to move on in the process, you have to upload an Adobe file, the CSET certification form. And then if you select mail in a check, it'll provide you with the address and you'll select submit and it'll submit your signed CSET certification form. But if you decide that you wanna pay online, you'll select the pay online and continue to payment. This will take you to the payment portal and it'll split out each month if you have multiple months due you can select the either the credit or the debit card, which is a percentage service fee, or you can select the electronic check, which is a $2 service fee, and then move through the process that way. And that's how you use the website. So Becky, quick question for you. So when you said that they could, um... They download their certification form. They take it and have their authorized rep sign it or the board. If they choose to do a mail-in option, are we requiring them to go in and still upload the certification form or can they just send it in with the warrant with the with that certification form? They can just send it in with the certification form. Okay. Yeah, they, they don't have to do step number two if you don't want to. Um, if, there's still the opportunity to uh, email in a copy of your check and the CSCT certification form, the signed one, if you think that you're going to have a timing issue with the mail. And if we have a if we have an emailed copy of the check, then we'll we will release the state share amount to DPHHS. Does anybody have any questions? I don't see any in chat. Let's see here. Okay. So the first one actually was one about, it was from Jill Reynolds. It said, is the plan for FMAP to go back to being updated in July and October? And so Jill, I think that, you know, the, uh, the way I understood it is that their FMAP potential changes is quarterly. And so every quarter there is a potential for an FMAP change, but I think historically it's been like less than a percent or around a percent. So it's nothing that would be material. I think the what I was referencing earlier is, is the potential for a more material change is going to be if they stop the Center for Medicaid Services stops using that enhanced FMAP rate due to COVID. And so we'd lose that extra 6% that's being applied right now. And then Lacey had a question that says, I don't have anything due for March. Um, why would that be? So Becky, maybe I'll let you address that. I don't know if you have Marches. I do. Um, so it's not when, when um, services happen, it's not based really on a month. It's based on the timing of when they submit their uh, their claims into DPHHS. And that that may not be on a monthly basis. You'll have to work with your provider. Sometimes they submit them on a quarterly basis. So it's not based on date of service. Right. So if there's not 
a bill out there for March, usually it means that you haven't you haven't received um, that we haven't received any claims, a clean claim. But if you have questions about it, you can email us and we'll let you know. So I don't see any other questions in the chat box. Um, I don't know if anybody else has some any questions for Becky or myself, um, or if you guys just have general comments, we're again, happy to take any of those as well. This is a, a question. I'm just wondering if, if this access.gov is accessible only to specific individuals within a school district, or I'm, I'm trying to access it uh, for, for our district in Bozeman and, and putting in an NPI number and getting a, invalid NPI number entry and I'm not able to get in past the provider verification. Um, I can work with you on that. Okay. Do you wanna, uh, if you can contact me, I'll help walk you through the process. Sure, that sounds great. Yeah, and everybody, sh and then, I, that's a good point, Chad, too. Everybody should have, a, like the, your MPI should work, um, but if for some reason it's not, then like get a hold of Becky. And we'll make sure that she got the right one. We have because we have run into some issues. Just you know, as these as any new process comes out, we've have identified some schools that actually had a shared MPI number, and so we were having to work with them a little bit to try to get that separated out. Um, let's see. And Rita looks like Rita had a question. That says when I log in, it says that I don't have anything that needs to be done. However, when I start the form, there is a state amount due. And Becky, is that when they do their first one, if they haven't done that, then that's when they go in there to open it up that first time, then it shows it versus if they have some saved in there. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So, so Rita, when you go in there that first time, then it should show, it may not do like where Becky had three months worth of actual um, certification amounts, but you would just be doing just the one as you initiate it. And also, Rita, if you would like, um, you can call me and I can walk you through. We could um, do some share screens or I can check into what's actually happening. Yeah, it looks like Rita said she had two previously, which I think it wipes it out, doesn't it? Becky, after yeah. they've done it. So if you don't yeah. have an actual, Rita, if I understand it right, Becky can correct me. If you don't create an actual account, then the historical save of those documents, you'll lose that, okay? But if you go in there each month and let's say you're being diligent and you're paying each each of the previous months, then when you go in for that that most current month, you should only see that month's activity. And then Stacy had uh, says, I'm curious to see what the schools are using for documentation for payments to OPI. Can anyone provide a sample of how a total claim looks? And so, Stacy, when you say submitting documentation to OPI, are you talking about the match? Or are you talking about the actual claims that are being submitted from the mental health providers? The match. Okay. So the only thing that we require from you um, is just that certification form and the check. Those are the only two documents that we require in order for your claims to be reimbursed. Does that answer your question, Stacey? Yeah, were there going to be any updates to the FAQs um, regarding, I think maybe what Stacey's referring to is additional documentation in case of an audit? And I think there was some conflicting guidance from DPHHS and OPI around the FAQs. And, and I thought I thought DPHHS was going to release something. Yeah, I was trying to think. Thanks, Chad, for the question. I was trying to remember when our last FAQ went out, Let me take a look. Because I know that we did work with DPHHS and had some revisions. Uh, let me see if I have our last one. And I think Stacy, your question, he says, it says, uh, let's see here, hold on, I'm sorry. 
So just think our orders will have a finding if we cannot prove where the match comes from. And so, Stacy, when you guys actually, you know, create your warrant, that's where we talked about, you know, in our, our guidance and suggestion is that when you actually make that payment in, if you use some type of unique, you know, project report or code or something like that, you should be able to show the an order what fund it came from and that you can identify that that payment specifically. And so I think if when the auditors do come and it should be as simple as just a, a printout from your guys' accounting system to show where the match came from, that it came from a non-federal source. Let me address that. And so Stacy said, I've been downloading the remittance advice from DPHHS, trying to match the billing amount from my provider. Okay. And I don't know, Stacey, if you've been successful reconciling, because I know that um, there has been some additional reports that have been made available to districts if they're having a hard time reconciling. And you can actually contact Christine White at DPHHS um, directly, and they can help you out with that. Because I think that part of that is once they get a little bit of the information, then they actually get, um, they're, they're able to reconcile that. And then Jane um, was saying, uh, said, I'm sorry, can you repeat again um, what you require, the check in the CSCT form? And Jane, that's absolutely correct. So what you actually send to OPI is just that signed CSCT form and then the match payment that comes from that non-federal source. And once we receive that and verify that that's the amount that um, you're owed, then we notify DPHHS and then they'll release the claims that were submitted for that, that amount, match amount. And then Stacy had a, another comment. So it takes a very long time and Christine has been very helpful, but it includes student names on the remittance advice. And so that the remittance advice and what actually comes from the MMIS system, like I, we don't have much to do with that. That really is Department of Public Health and Human Services. Um, and I don't know, Becky, there was one other report, wasn't there, that we were sending out or had available that we got from DPHHS and that was by the ICN where they could identify the individual students if needed. And that that did not have any PPI on it. It was only their that ICN number that if, if they got that from DPHHS and they can reconcile it by claim, by specific student claims, is that right? Yes, and we've been we've been emailing those out as soon as we, as soon as the bills go out. Okay. And Becky, looks like Carrie Ruff had a question. So it looks like she may have submitted a reimbursement, but hasn't got anything. Um, Carrie, if you want to send me an email, and then I can work with DPHHS to see uh, when they on their end released the claims to the uh, to the district. And sorry, Chad, I didn't forget about you. I was just jumping on our website here. Let's answer some of those. So Chad, looks like the one on our website is January 21st, but I do think there is a February one. So let me uh, let me get that updated on our website, and then if you guys want, I could actually just do a. I could have my staff send out a email to everybody that's on here. We could that way everybody just has one. It looks like Jessica had a question to the group if they had about coding. So I'm not sure, Jessica, if you want to be more specific on what you're looking for. Payments sent to OPI. Um, it's okay. Let's see. Hey, Jessica, did you look at the, the the guidance out there that was out there for some of them, um, for an example?
from Denise. Yeah, and so the one that's out there, the accounting guidance is one that we worked with Denise on um, when she was still at Masball. Have you had a chance to look at that one, Jessica? Looks like Stacy was able to provide one too. Thanks, Stacy. Yeah, and that 815 is that project reporter code that Stacy put up there that we um, had established just specifically for that CSAT match payment going in. Right, so. And there's one. Thank you, Carrie, for your yours as well. Yeah, so you guys' questions around MOE, um, absolutely right. You know, the, I know that some of the schools have chosen to use that 280 code, um, and you're right that it will impact your MOE. So the, the thing to think about is that when you receive that money back, um, if you guys do any adjusting type entries, is that you can actually still go in there and um, find other um, 280 costs you know, that are maybe CSCT related that you can use that match they're receiving back in that fund 15 to offset some of that. And that will actually, um, it'll offset that, that MOE payment that you're, that 280, if you're sending out as a 280 MOE payment, I'm sorry, not as a, my apologies, as a CSCT match payment, but you're using that 280 coding that would have impact your MOE. So. Okay, I don't see anybody's hands up. And I don't see any other questions out there. Okay, well, that's it then, guys. I uh, want to say thank you for everybody for uh, coming and joining us again. And we will hold this again next month just so we can do a follow-up on everything. Um, you know, we will uh, go ahead and I'll have make sure Becky can go again and she can give another, you know, just a quick run-through of the Access Gov system. Of course, if you guys have problems, please feel free to reach out to us anytime. And again, like I've conveyed to you guys at the beginning, if you guys through this have any suggestions for us or things that we can do on our end to help make the process easier, by all means, please reach out to us and let us know that. So um, other than that, I appreciate everybody coming and we will talk to you next month. Thank you.